Hey guys, in this video I quickly want to talk about the recent update that Figma has made because I didn't get a chance to talk about them. And I think these updates were launched on 17 August, so apologies for not covering it earlier. But let's just get into it. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the ability to move published components and even like normal components, com component sets between different files without necessarily breaking the link between them. So as an example, like I have a component created here and as you can see, it's in the old library file. I'm going to copy this file, uh, copy this button, and I'm going to place it in my um, in some other file. One thing that I'd like to point out is if I actually go here, you can see, okay, it's published, it's up to date, so on and so forth. I can obviously click on it, and as you can see, it's actually in the old library file. Now, if for some reason I've actually created a new library file, I can basically just cut this particular component and paste it here. And once I do that, it says, hey, you've, you're actually pasting this from a published component. Uh, you're, you're moving published components, so do you want to make a library update? And I can say, okay, go ahead. So if I actually publish it and now go back and review some of the updates, it says it's been moved from the old library. So now I don't have to worry about the design system update manager. I just move the file and I just update it. And now, as you can see, it's in the new library. So this is just amazing. Uh, for those who, for those of you who are avid users of Figma and have been moving uh, components around different files, want to combine them, want to break them apart, so on and so forth, this is game changing. This is just, just amazing. So the other thing that I want to talk about is the ability to actually switch components. So, right, so previously, for example, here, as you can see, or switch or even like place components. So I actually have some other buttons coming here from some other files. So previously, what I used to do is obviously press like command two to actually select the button and then let's say drag it here. But now there's an easy way that Figma has allowed you to do to insert a uh, component. So I can just press shift I, I can search for a button. And here is, as you can see, I have that button here. Similarly, for example, and this is something that a lot of people might not tell you, if I wanted to actually replace this button with something else or probably with the above button, I can actually go ahead and I can search for a button now, as you can see, I have these two buttons and it's asking me what I want to do. I can obviously click on it to add it to the artboard. But let's say if I actually want to update this button to um, this blue button, I can actually press the Alt key and then click on it. And as you can see, it magically changes to the different button. This is something that you previously were not able to do from the left hand side. Similarly, not only can I actually toggle between different types of the same element, but I can basically just replace this to anything. I probably have created some other elements here, so I'm just gonna press A now. As an example, if I actually just wanted to replace this component with an icon, like I can do that by pressing the Alt key and it's just gonna replace it completely. This in itself is game changing. This is something that you previously were not able to do easily. So you obviously could go here and you can, let's say, search for a different component and you can replace it here, but that actually makes it easier. It allows you to add components from the same place and it also allows you to replace components from the same place and it's just game changing. The other thing that I want to talk about is the ability to swap out libraries. So one thing that I don't want to point out is let's just go ahead and actually create some colors here. So I'm going to create a color in this library. I'm going to name it, I don't know, dark. Sorry, I don't know why I'm naming it dark here. But let's say this is the primary color. I'm going to go ahead, say primary. I'm going to create another um, color here. And let's just go ahead and change the hue and going to name it secondary. So here we have these two colors coming from this old library file. I'm going to publish them. And once it's published, I'm going to go back to my to this file. And let me just go ahead and create a frame around it. I can actually go to my fill and I can search for a primary. Obviously, this primary is actually coming from this file because I don't see anything, um, uh, any name above it. But let's just go ahead and actually enable our old library and new library file. So now that I've done that, I can actually go here and I can see I want this to be from the old library primary and I want this to be from the uh, old library secondary. So now I have these colors linked from the old library. I'm just going to go ahead and copy them, copy these and I'm going to paste them here. And obviously, as you can see, these are also coming from that particular library. They're not coming from uh, this particular file. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say that the primary color in this file is going to be this one. Let's just go ahead and name it primary. And I'm going to say the secondary color in this file is actually going to be something different. Maybe, I don't know, this one, slightly lighter. I'm going to name it secondary. I'm also going to publish this file just so the updates are there. And once it is published, I can actually go to my uh, 
libraries that I've added, I can go to my old library, I can click on it, and I can say swap library. So if I actually search for the new library, as you can see, it's here. And it also allows me to choose which of the styles or components I want to replace with the new library. So I can choose, hey, I just want to replace the primary one or whether I want to replace both of them. And I click swap. And as you can see, in a while, it's going to update both of those things. And this is just insane. You can update whole component sets if you're, let's say, migrating from V1 to V2. Everything can be updated with a single button click. And you can also choose what to update and what not to update if there's a breaking change. And this is just amazing. One other thing that I'd like to point out, and that's coming from an old um, update, is the ability to actually have different flows. So let's say this is a this is flow one and this is flow two. Now previously, uh, for example, if I actually wanted to present these things, like there was no way of switching to these different things in Figma. Uh, without obviously having different interaction buttons between them. Now, however, what you can do is you can actually add, if you go to flow one, like you can actually add a flow starting point and I can name this, this is gonna be my uh, starting flow. And we can obviously say that this is gonna be the, let's say purchase flow. And this one is actually going to be the checkout flow. Just, just in case you actually had those two things to begin with. And now if I go to my prototype view, you can actually see that I have these purchase and checkout things on the left. So I don't have to connect anything. I don't have to do anything. Like if I want completely separated flows, I can lay them out quite easily in the left hand sidebar. Similarly, for example, one other thing that you can do is with the, with the interactions here, you can actually go and click on the edit button here uh, on the pencil icon and you can type a lot of informational things. So this is exploratory exploratory and just showing you how awesome flows are and if i then let's say just click outside go back to my prototype view as you can see we we can actually add some description and there's fascinatingly there's some ability to actually customize this text as well add bullet points add links hey or let's say https google.com or something along those lines so once i and obviously i can link it so i can obviously i can place the link and i can say i wanted to, to go to the google.com and now as you can see you can actually have spec links here you can have links to jira tickets or anything else that you want and obviously you can click these links to actually go there so this is again an extremely powerful feature all of these features are extremely powerful and i'd definitely love to know how you start using them so that's pretty much it for now. Do subscribe, do hit the bell icon, do let me know if you need anything else, but I'll see you in the next one. Take care.